What's up, boys? This is Dual Factor once again with another video. This time it's going to be a deck profile uh, of a Blue Eyes deck that I've been playing at Locals for the past week or so. It's actually really interesting because I've actually played a lot of spicy decks. Uh, I didn't really want to play Spiral or anything like that. Local does kind of want to play a fun deck, and I really enjoy playing Blue Eyes. I always have. Like, I have multiple deck profiles of this on the channel for some reason, and I just continue to go back to that complete for fun so I want to kind of show you what I've been messing around with for this format and I think it's really interesting and something fun for you guys to play at locals so without further ado let's get into it so to start off we play three copies of Lies No Explanation in the deck you need three of that you honestly really do need three of vanilla to play this deck which is really weird but yeah whatever then you play three alternative it's one of the best standalone monsters in the deck it's big, it's lovely, it pops cards for free, so I feel like you have to play it. And then we play one Dragon Spirit of White. A lot of people on Blue Eyes builds play two, especially when they're not playing Chaos Max, but I never really see the need for more than one, so just one copy. And then I am playing Dragon's Ravine in the deck, so I am also playing one copy of Malefic Blue Eyes. Just as another level 8 that you can use to go into Dark Matter turn 1, because I am playing the Goliath combo, and I think it's really important to be able to establish with that combo turn 1. And then that's it for the big dragons in the deck that aren't blue eyes or blue eyes monsters. On to the tuners. I play three sage. It's your best normal summon in the deck. It adds any of the stones from your deck to your hand. It adds master with eyes of blue, which you ha I feel like you have to play in this deck no matter what, especially with master rule four. Um, it just it does everything you want it to do on a card. And then the one master with blue. You have to play this. It um. I say you have to play it because it allows you to go into your turn one uh, Blue Eye Spirit Dragon and Crystal Wing turn one, and that's a really powerful play that your deck has an option to, and if you don't play this card, you can't do that turn one, or you can't do that at all, so I think it's definitely necessary to play. And then, this is where my build gets a little different from some of the builds you've seen in the past, because I play an increased tuner account in the deck for the Dragon because I am playing cards of constants in the build. So, I play three White Stone of the Ancients. So, now, this isn't necessarily outside of the norm. I just, in a lot of the times I've played this, like, I've only played two because I don't want to see multiples of it. But in this particular build, I am playing Cards of Constance just to get through the deck faster and give it a little bit more consistency. So, I wanted to have an increased number of Cards of Constance targets in, targets in the deck, so that's why I'm playing three of the Stones. And then this is outside of the norm. But because I'm playing the Cards of Constance, I want it to be as live as possible. So, I play two copies of White Stone of the White Stone of Legend. Um, most decks only play one copy of this. But like I said, I wanted to be able to consistently resolve cards of constants in the deck along with all the other draw cards. So I felt like playing two is necessary. And then because I'm playing Dragon's Ravine, I'm also playing one copy of Jaguna Corsesca. So it serves two purposes in the deck. So one, it's a searchable tuner through Dragon's Ravine. So if I need a tuner, I have access to one if I have the field spell. And two, it's also a Cards of Consonants target. So I'm playing six of them in the deck with two copies of it. So uh, theoretically, I should be any time I see Cards of Consonants, I should always be able to resolve it. And then for the other one of Dragons, I play one of Morphage Goliath and one copy of Arc Brave Dragon. I think it's necessary to play right now, especially with a lot of decks being extra deck strategies, just being able to summon this. Because the unique thing about this deck, like, it can go first or second. And you can set this, like, it's really good going second, because you can break their boards, set huge monsters on the field, and then put, essentially, a Domain of the Monarchs on the field on legs, on, and they have to be able to respond to it without going in the extra deck. So that's a really, really powerful play. Like, it's just almost guaranteed game against Spiral, which I've done some tests against Spiral on this deck, actually really does, because your monsters are so much bigger than theirs. But cutting them off from the extra deck completely is really good. So that's it for the monsters. On to the spells. So you have a lot of draw power in this deck, so we'll start off with three copies of Pot of Desires. It's your best draw spell. Like the card says draw two, almost everything in your deck's a three of, and the one ofs you don't really care you don't really miss them if you banish them on Pot of Desires. Because it doesn't take away from the core strategy. So three of that. Then I'm also playing three copies of trading. Um another reason why I wouldn't take this deck to an event is because if you see almost every card in here. All the power spells and everything like that are just, like, huge ash fodder, so... But, yeah, you need the deck to be as consistent as possible, so you have to play three of that, especially with as many level eights you are playing. That's why I'm also going to the extreme of playing two cards of consonants. Because your, what your deck does, like, it's a strategy simple, but, like, 
it's really fragile, and you like you have to be able to you have to have a decent opening. That's why I'm playing so many draw spells. And then we're also playing three melody. It's the best searcher in your deck. It also searches malefic blue eyes, so like you just get to extend your combos. And then I'm also playing two copies of Dragon's Ravine. I'm a huge believer that everything that's wrong with this deck, Dragon's Ravine corrects because it gives you infinitely more access to your stones. It gives you access to more level 8 dragons. Uh, for example, it's kind of cool if you open a white stone of the ancients and a dragon's ravine, you essentially have a rota for any blue ice monster in your deck. For malefic, alternative, regular, like any of those, like it becomes a rota. So, that being said, especially like you can also search the Corsesca off it, so if you have like a level 8 but you don't have a tuner to make turn 1 spirit, this gives you that tuner. So, I think it's a 100% include in every blue eyes deck and. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong on that, but as long as I'm able to play this card, I'm going to. And then two copies of Terraforming to get it. Uh, this goes back to an old theory. Like, you want to see the first one, but you don't want to see the second, so essentially that takes the second out of the deck. And then the Revival spells, three Return of the Dragon Lords. It's the best, it's the best standalone spell. You gotta play it. And then one copy of Soul Charge. I was playing Silver's Cry, but I cut it because I found being able to search a tuner was more important to me than having the Silver's Cry, because a lot of times you'd open it and it just it would break your hand, so... There's that. And then the One of Trap. Scale Drain. Everything in your deck. All your monsters are better standalone monsters than almost every other deck in the game, because you're just big beaters at that point. So when you play this card, like, your opponent has no real way to out your dragons. So, like, you draw, it's an auto win. And that's it for the main deck. On to the extra. My boy, you already know. Um, I play two sevens, I play Michael, and I play Fairy Dragon. So Fairy Dragon is necessary to play for the turn one spirit crystal wing play that I was telling you about. You have to play this. And then Michael, I pick this over Moonlight because, like, you just need something to clear monsters, and I'd rather have this than Moonlight, so. Uh, start a spark. Sometimes you just need a level eight monster, in all, in all fairness, to summon off spirit dragon so you can combo off turn one. Uh, you do side in floodgates though, so you can summon this and protect itself and protect the floodgate. But most of the time, it's just there because you need a level eight. Um, crystal wing for the aforementioned play. Two spirit dragons. Uh, you're never gonna need more than this. I rarely even make the second one. It's just there for utility. Uh, Azure Eyes. This is like the number one monster you summon off spirit. It's broken. Uh, Felgrind. Good generic eight. It's essentially Effect Veiler. Um, it protects your cards. And, I mean, it's just like a generic 8. Uh, Heliopolis. I would be playing that other rank 8 that came out of the 10. I can't think of its name. But for some reason, I don't have a copy of it. But this card's good, too. Like, it just... It clears fields. Like, that's that's all you need to know. Uh, number 38. No explanation. Uh, then I play a bigger Galaxy. So I play one Cypher. One Full Armor. One blade. This card's actually really cool. It's like a... It's Dryden if Blue Eyes out of Dryden. And then Dark Matter, because usually this is your turn... Like, these are your, like... This is like your turn one package, or like your... Like, you make this if it's turn two. But, like, this is like your turn one play. You make Dark Matter, you send the Arc Brave combo, you sit on it with a 4k beater, 2750 beater. So, like, this is like the big vocal point of the deck. And then, for the rare occasion that you actually do make this, Deco Talker's in there. Um, at the time of making this video, Link Revo is not legal, so I wasn't going to show you a profile with Link Revo. But uh, when it becomes legal, you can do you can do some really sick things in this deck. So I might bring you an update when it becomes legal. But that was my Blue Eyes deck profile, boys. Always remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, big things to come. I actually have a really really spicy deck that I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to let my buddy if um he plays on Thursday. I'm going to let my buddy Bobby play it on Thursday, and then afterwards I'll show you. But it's really really spicy. But, uh, and I also have a couple events that we're going to announce on the channel. I need to get more specific details before I tell you those, tell you guys those. But just stay tuned for that because it's actually going to be, re I'm going to, it's going to be like an invite to everyone to come out and actually come to the events. So always remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys later. Peace.